Hey! Welcome back to Clean Cut, and this is a replica of the work called Fountain. This piece of art was created in 1917 by Marcel Duchamp, who basically just signed a urinal with the pseudonym R. Mutt and claimed it was art. This was intended to make a point, and it's a point I think is relevant to today's topic, because although Fountain was created long before postmodernism came into existence, nothing could represent the movement of postmodernism better. This season we've been discussing the heresies that have surfaced throughout the history of the Church, but no official heresies today. We're going to talk about what happened in the aftermath of the modernist heresy. In the mid to late 20th century, a movement started up which claimed, essentially, that modernist rejections of tradition didn't go far enough. This would become known as postmodernism, and those who belonged to the movement generally adopted skepticism, cynicism, and rejection of large stories, philosophies, ideologies, and other kinds of objective truth, including the usual ideas of human reason, human nature, social progress, moral values, truth claims, and even reality itself. Instead, postmodernists will usually cite discussion, history, and interpretation as the way they acquire information, with tendencies towards the idea that things may have multiple identities, the notion of moral claims being relative, and a general habit of repeating and referencing other postmodernists. Now, this is the final step in the journey into the complete denial of truth in defense of the world. To a postmodernist, there is no way to prove anything, and the only evidence is gotten by repeating what someone else has already said, in theory. You see, one reason why postmodernism hasn't been recognized as an actual heresy is that heresies need to be able to order themselves well enough to actually propose a thing that is contrary to the Church's teachings, and postmodernism is just too chaotic and jumbled to do that, because it arises out of the rejection of authentic proof and the denial of truth itself, it can't prove any claim whatsoever, even if it should happen to present one. Putting it simply, postmodernism is a series of assumptions, but not really a method of thought so much as an attempt to collaborate with a capricious world with impunity without actually justifying oneself in any consistent sense. Furthermore, it's quite impossible for any postmodernist to live their lives in a way consistent with their postmodernist views. If, for example, you deny proof completely, then you would have no way of knowing whether the swimming pool you're about to dive into is filled with chlorinated water or with hydrochloric acid, or to use a more everyday example, whether or not there are cars approaching the place where you're about to step into the road. So, if anyone ever tried to live in a way that was totally consistent with postmodernism, they wouldn't be able to do so for very long. So how can anyone claim that postmodernism is even a real thing? After all, it sounds like they only really want to avoid moral and religious truths, which is basically what modernism was all about, right? Well, the sad truth is that truths of logic, philosophy, science, and knowledge in general will also frequently be dismissed by the postmodernists in this way, by claiming that no knowledge can really be proven absolutely, and citing the most extreme kinds of skepticism as their excuse for not addressing the issue further. They will apply postmodernist techniques to escape from facts like these, but not just facts that impact them personally. For example, they might cite postmodernist skepticism to avoid acknowledging the evidence that one of their idols has lied about something in a public forum, but not cite it when picking a can of soup off of a shelf to make sure it's not a can of dish soap. However, if these clear inconsistencies are pointed out to them, they will again merely cite postmodernism to avoid addressing the issue. Now, this isn't the case with all postmodernists, of course. Some will actually acknowledge the findings of science and even logic, but that's really the problem when you get down to it. The distinction between what is accepted and what is rejected is an utterly arbitrary one based on the whims of the specific postmodernist you're talking to. It places their own will into the supreme position of deciding what knowledge to admit into their heads, and while humans do, of course, have this ability, our free will being our highest ability governing the others, there traditionally comes a point where people have so much evidence that they would be irrational to reject a proposition. The postmodernist rejects it anyway while presenting postmodernism as their escape route. After all the videos I've done on skepticism, it should be clear what the problem with postmodernism is, but to sum it up, it assumes that we can't have knowledge of a wide range of topics, but doesn't prove that. 
Its only defense of itself is a sort of best-we-can-do line, where the person will say that picking up tidbits of information from various sources is the best-we-can-do in terms of obtaining knowledge. However, this also they fail to prove. In order to say that a certain method of obtaining information is the best, you would need to be able to show how it succeeds in certain ways, or is more efficient than other methods somehow, which would involve proof, which is impossible in postmodernism. I didn't always recognize this postmodernist attitude in the past when I encountered it. I didn't always know what postmodernism was. However, at the time, there was something that I used to call it, which I still think is the best way to describe the postmodernist approach to life. Selective, voluntary ignorance. This is why I said that Fountain was a good symbol of postmodernism. Like Fountain, postmodernism is a toilet with no actual creativity in its construction. It tries to give in to the world, doing whatever others do, and claiming that it's your own work without any effort. The only difference is that what postmodernism gets out of people is less pleasant. Well, that's the end of the season on the heresies, but next time we'll be back with a significantly tougher topic, the grace of Almighty God and the saving work of Jesus. See you then. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.